Hey, glad to have you here. We're going to start talking today in, about section 8.5, and we're going to focus on the trapezoid part of this section that's about using properties of trapezoids and kites. We're going to be using properties of trapezoids, as you see. So the goal is very easy. I basically need you to learn the properties about the sides, the angles, and the diagonals of a trapezoid, similar to the way that you'll learn the same for parallelograms, as well as rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. All right, so first of all, what is a trapezoid? I've got a couple of pictures of trapezoids here. I think you guys have a good understanding of what a trapezoid is, and your understanding ought to be that trapezoids have parallel sides. Now, I say that, don't parallelograms have parallel sides as well? Trapezoids specifically have one pair of sides that are parallel and another pair of sides that are not parallel. All right, so in the first picture, you can see that these are the parallel sides, but the other two sides, they're not parallel to one another. And here you can see in the second trapezoid that, again, you've got a pair of parallel lines, but you only have one pair of parallel lines within this quadrilateral. There's a definition written out for you. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So we know parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. If there are no pairs of parallel sides, then for now at least we just call it a quadrilateral. Okay, now what are some properties that you need to know about trapezoids? Well, before I give those to you, let me give you a little bit of terminology. The parallel sides in a trapezoid are always called bases. So you can see these are bases right there and then this is a base and this is a base in a second trapezoid and then the non-parallel sides are called legs trapezoids have legs All right, so there's a leg, there's a leg there's a leg, here's a leg as well and so when we're talking about the properties of the sides of a trapezoid it makes sense to refer to the legs and the bases and really all we can say for the properties of the sides are these two things. The bases are parallel, and the legs are not parallel. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll throw in one more little fact here. The bases are never congruent. It is possible for the legs to be congruent, but you'll never see bases congruent to one another. If the bases were congruent, then you would end up with a trapezoid, sorry, a parallelogram, not a trapezoid. All right. Now, as far as the angles, it turns out that there's no special properties about the angles in a trapezoid. Oh, you know what? Sorry. Um, there is one special property. Silly me, I was thinking about diagonals for a second. Um, we do have parallel lines, don't we? And we have legs that can be called transversals of parallel lines. Well, anytime you've got parallel lines cut by transversals, the consecutive interior angles form are supplementary. Now I'm going to try to phrase this very carefully when I write it down. The consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary. All right. Now if I'm looking here at this first parallelogram, these two consecutive angles are between the bases, they're supplementary to one another. These two consecutive angles are between the bases, they're supplementary to one another. If you look at consecutive angles between two legs, however, they're not supplementary. So these would not be supplementary and these would not be supplementary. So it's not like all the pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary as they would be in a parallelogram, but just the ones between the bases are. All right, same thing here. Between the two legs, these consecutive angles are supplementary. These consecutive angles are not supplementary. All right, now what I was getting ready to say a little bit ago when I thought I was talking about diagonals is that Turns out, when you're just talking about a trapezoid in general, there's no special properties about diagonals. All right. Now, all of these things that I've listed down here are things that are true if you know you've got a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of opposite sides that are parallel to one another. Now, you can have a special kind of trapezoid, just like we were able to have special types of parallelograms. Um, and the special kind of trapezoid that you could have is called an isosceles trapezoid. And this is the type of trapezoid that most people envision whenever they are thinking about trapezoids. An isosceles trapezoid is exactly what you would think of. It's a trapezoid that has two congruent sides. And specifically, it's the legs that are congruent. I told you bases can never be congruent in a trapezoid. 
But in the instance that the legs are congruent, you've got an isosceles trapezoid. So in this trapezoid here, then, we would say that these are the congruent, those are the legs that are congruent. All right. Now, there are special properties that isosceles trapezoids must have for their sides, angles, and diagonals that a non-isosceles trapezoid wouldn't have. And one of those is that the legs are congruent. That's the property for the sides. Well, what about the angles? It turns out that whenever the legs are congruent, that what are called the base angles are also congruent. Remember in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent? Same thing in an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. It's, now that, it's just that now you have two pairs of base angles. So, the pairs of angles along the same base are congruent. So that means these two angles along this base and these two angles along the other base are congruent with one another. Now if you look at what I suppose you could call leg angles, the angles between bases, they're still supplementary. All right, This angle plus this angle is still 180 degrees and this angle plus this angle is still 180 degrees because it's a trapezoid period. right? Okay, and then what about diagonals? Well, we said just generally speaking, there's nothing special about the diagonals of a trapezoid. But when the trapezoid is isosceles, then it turns out that the diagonals are congruent. Now, notice the diagonals do not bisect each other in trapezoids. All right, they don't even look like they bisect each other, right? This half, this part of one diagonal is much longer than the other part. But they are congruent so long as it's an isosceles trapezoid. So let's take a quick look at a couple of problems involving trapezoids then. First, I've given you this quadrilateral on a coordinate plane, and I'm telling you to decide whether ABCD is a trapezoid, and if it is a trapezoid, is it isosceles? And we're going to justify our answer. Well, in order to determine if this is a trapezoid, just think about what the definition of a trapezoid is. A trapezoid has to have one pair of parallel sides. And when you're looking at a figure in a coordinate plane and you want to know if it have any parallel sides, you want to know, are there any two sides that have the same slope, right? Now, we don't need to check AD and BC. One of those is a vertical line and the other one is non-vertical, so clearly they're not parallel to one another. But it would make sense for us to check the slope of AB and DC to see if, they, if their slopes are equal or not. And indeed they are. If you count the rise or run from A to B, you're going to see that you go up one unit and right three units. So that slope is one third. And then for DC, you're going to see that you go up two, right six. And of course, two, six is the same thing as one third. So this, it is a parallelogram, sorry, a trapezoid, because it has one pair of parallel sides. All right, so that's the answer to the first part. ABCD is a trapezoid since the slopes of segment AB and DC are equal. Now, I would accept that answer if I asked you the same question on a quiz or a test. I'm going to add a little more detail. And that's this little bit right there, that the slopes of AD and BC are not equal because if both pairs opposite sides were parallel, that would make a parallelogram not a trapezoid. All right, next, is this trapezoid isosceles or not? Well, clearly we need to check to see if the legs are equal in length then in order to determine if it's isosceles. All right, so the length of AD is easy because it's just a vertical line. You can tell that it is four units long, right, from just counting. And then let's check the length of BC. Now use the distance formula if you like in order to find the distance from B to C. I'm noticing that you can make an isosceles right triangle, however, for which BC is the hypotenuse, right? That's an isosceles right triangle because this is 3 and this is 3. And so I can look at that directly and say that BC is 3 squared of 2 using our 45, 45, 90 triangle stuff. And 3 times the square root of 2 is not equal to 4, is it? So it's not isosceles since the legs are not equal. Pretty simple, right? Okay. So you know kind of what you need to know about trapezoids with one exception. There's one more little detail that we're going to learn about. And that's, oh, you know what? Forgot about this problem right here. We'll get back to that thought that I just had in a moment about mid-segments of trapezoids. That's the thing I was going to mention. So let's suppose that you've got an isosceles trapezoid. If you have an isosceles trapezoid and you know any of the four interior angle measures, 
you can always find each of the other three. And I'm asking you to find each of the unknown angle measures here. All right, now how do I know it's isosceles? Because I said that the legs were congruent. Now recall that in an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent to one another. So these two angles would be congruent, as well as these two angles up here would be congruent to one another, but they're not all four congruent. So we already know that this is 73 degrees down here. Great, so we've got the measure of angle Z. How do we find the measures of angles X and Y? Well, those are the angles between a pair of bases and they have to be supplementary to one another. So simply subtract 73 from 180 or 107 and that's what each of those angles X and Y are gonna have to measure. All right, so there you go, the measure of angle X and Y, each 107 degrees and the measure of angle Z, 73 degrees. All right, now onto that last thought that I was trying to communicate with you. Mid-segments of trapezoids is the last thing I need you to know about trapezoids. And you've learned about mid-segments of triangles. You can make a mid-segment of a triangle by connecting the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle. Well, we're going to take a similar but not exact definition for that and apply it to trapezoids here. You can connect the midpoints of the legs of a trapezoid and create what's called the mid-segment. Not any two sides, but the legs specifically. So say I draw the midpoints of PS and QR and I connect them, that segment that I make will be called a mid-segment. All right, so what do I need you to know about mid-segments? Well, first of all, they connect the midpoints of the legs. All right, mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment joining the midpoints of the legs. Need to know that. And so on a diagram, you would know that a segment is a mid-segment if it shows you that it connects the midpoint. So here I'm showing you that M is the midpoint of segment PS. And then here, I'm showing you that N is the midpoint of segment QR because I showed you it divided the mid-segment, divided each of those legs in half. All right, now there's two special properties about a mid-segment that make it worth discussing. One of those is that a mid-segment is always parallel to each of the bases. And whenever the, you draw the mid-segment, then you end up creating some angles that are congruent to one another. For instance, now you have corresponding angles of parallel lines there and there that would have to be congruent, and you've got corresponding angles of parallel lines there and there that would be congruent. I could also draw two other pairs of corresponding angles that would have to be congruent. And actually, I can go a little further, and you end up making two trapezoids out of one trapezoid, don't you? Because now PQ, uh, what's that letter over there? NM is a trapezoid, and MNRS is also another trapezoid. The second thing I need you to know about the, a mid segment of a trapezoid is how its length compares to the length of the basis. And it turns out that the length of the mid segment is the average of the length of the basis. Or in other words, it's the mean, the length of the mid segment is the mean of the length of the basis. So let me kind of summarize those two um, properties here. The mid segment MN is parallel to the base PQ and SR. And, now think about how you average two things together. You add them up and divide by two, right? So the length of MN equals the length of PQ plus the length of SR divided by 2. All right, now let's put that into practice, specifically the length thing. Here I got three examples in the first pair. We're going to find the length of the mid-segment of the trapezoid, and I'm just trying to emphasize to you how simple this is. Whenever you know the length of the bases, and you want to find the length of the mid-segment, all you've got to do is add those things up and divide by 2. So 31 plus 45 is 76. 76 divided by 2 is 38. Can't get much easier than that, right? For the other one, the bases are 38 and 27. The sum of those is 65. And divide 65 by 2, you get 32.5. Now, I can make this a slightly more difficult problem by introducing variables. In this last example, we're going to find a value of x. Now you can see that x is used to help represent the length of one of the bases as well as the length of the mid-segment. And we know the length of the shorter of the two bases is 25. 
Well, all we need to do is make an equation that shows the mid segment's length is half of the sum of the lengths of the bases. Or in other words, we could say x plus 7, the length of the mid segment, is equal to 3x minus 40 plus 25 divided by 2. Now, algebraically, how do you solve that? The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So you get 2 times x plus 7 is equal to 3x minus 40 plus 25. Then let's simplify each side of the equation. We're going to distribute on the left side. You get 2x plus 14. There's nothing to distribute in these parentheses, so we're really just going to add negative 40 with 25, and that's going to be minus 15. So 3x minus 15. And then subtract 2x from both sides, you'll get x over here. Add 15 to both sides, you'll get 29 over there. That's the value of x. Now, I'm just double-checking my answer right here. If I substitute that value of x back into the picture, I find that the mid is 36. And then 3 times 29 is 87. 87 minus 40 is 47. The second base is 47. 47 plus 25 is 72. 72 divided by 2 is 36. I know I got it correct. All right, great. We still got to learn about kites, but you know now the properties of trapezoids that you need to know. Thanks for your attention. See ya.